It's time for us to have a talk. A talk about one, where I've been, and two, my thoughts on the direction of the MAGA movement. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, and there are some things that need to be addressed. Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've seen you. You look great as ever. <laughs> now it's no secret that I've been MIA for a little while, and I feel as though I owe you guys an explanation for why. Today I want to get into half the reason why, and then my thoughts on where conservatism seems to be heading. And in a separate video, I'll tell you part two of where I've been, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on that video. Let's backtrack all the way to the beginning of the year, January to be exact. For those of you who remember, Liberty Hangout was demonetized on Facebook after big tech started coming down hard on pages that supported President Trump. While our monetization wasn't spared, our page thankfully survived the purge. But we became increasingly weary about what we were allowed to post now that we felt like our whole livelihood was at stake. We started noticing that other like-minded creators were getting censored left and right for talking about the BLM riots, the response to COVID-19, the 2020 election, and literally every single topic that conservatives wanted to talk about. Since I don't have the luxury of being sponsored by large organizations like Pre or you or Turning Point USA, we had to play it safe if we wanted to survive. I am 100% independent and backed by you guys and you guys only. And the relationship you and I have built over the last three years isn't something I felt ready to abandon just to get a few thousand views on some clickbait video. So we took a backseat to politics and let the people funded by millionaires do the talking. And we would stick to some street interviews about less intense topics. And perhaps we played it too safe this year because we have taken way too long of a break, but nonetheless, here we still are. And over the course of my break, I have been able to dedicate a lot of time to new and exciting chapters in my life, which I wouldn't be able to share with you had I gotten myself banned from social media. The first and most important thing to happen during my break is that I stopped being an atheist and dedicated my life to Jesus Christ. I'm not even sure how many of you knew I was an atheist, but I'm sure it's rather shocking. This is why in my debates about abortion over the past three years, you have never heard me bring up religion. I want to make a separate video getting into the details about my conversion, but I've been spending an incredible amount of time learning, asking questions, saying sorry to God, and attending mass. I started the RCIA program to be confirmed into the Catholic Church next year, and I'm so excited to share more of that with you all as the journey progresses. The second thing that happened was that I asked myself what my absence from YouTube would mean to you guys watching, to politics in general, and to the country. I came up with nothing of value and it really made me think, am I just making videos that have something to post? Yep. Am I even doing something genuine to my heart? No. Can I provide better, more meaningful content to the world? Yes, I can. It's hard to describe, but I feel that I have more to offer you all through my content than just complaining about the news of the week like every single other political commentator on the internet. What good am I doing by telling you what you should be mad about this week? What good am I doing by showing you how mentally unstable college students are when I step onto their campus? We all know how dilutive they've been for years. Let's be honest. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I want to offer you guys something that brings me joy to create, something different that you can get from me that you can't get from the other dozens of conservative YouTubers. Now, I won't be stopping my pop quiz on the beach videos. I love the good-hearted nature of those. I won't even stop going to rallies when they eventually pop up again, but I want to create a new type of conservative content that leaves the viewer happier after watching the video than when they clicked on the video. Something I've noticed ever since Joe Biden has become president is that in a lot of ways, the right now stands where the left did for the last four years. We are pessimistic, we are mad, we are discouraged about the future, and we have even become dominated by our emotions. Now, don't get me wrong, I do not think conservatives will get anywhere near as emotional as Democrats did in 2020. But I do see us trending down a path that we're better than, and I think we have so much more to offer our country than expletives and outrage. Something I was thrilled to discover this year is that your happiness should not depend on who is in the Oval Office. Your joy shouldn't come from a political party or the policies that they enact. Now, while we may need Trump to keep more of our money and our freedom, 
We don't need Trump to be happy and in good spirits. The only thing we need for that is the love of God and the support of family. This is where I feel as though I differ from so many conservative creators out there. I have never centered my identity around politics, but about the things I genuinely believe in and the things that bring me happiness. That's why I love sharing my wedding with you and the ways my husband and I are able to complete each other. And I don't say this to toot my own horn, but because I truly wish everyone could be as happy as I am, and hyper-focusing on what to be outraged with just isn't the way to accomplish that. I will explain more in my next video, but I feel that coming to Jesus has allowed me to look at things from a brand new perspective. Nothing could ever happen against the will of God. So if Joe Biden is the man in the White House and the Democrats are destroying what's left of the country, then there must be a reason why a loving God would ask us to undergo these difficulties. And I found that the answer is right here on the cross. This right here is the image of true happiness, and this right here is why we should not be fearful, outraged, or emotional over the things happening to the country. I've learned that hard times create opportunity for hope, because some of the greatest men to ever walk the earth, such as St. Peter and the apostles, would be completely unknown to us today if not for the hard times God asked them to go through. We should feel blessed to be counted among some of the holiest men to live, because our names may one day be remembered for the virtues we choose to live by. No one remembers the man who executed St. Maximilian Kolbe, but millions of people have heard the sacrifice he made to give his life to save an innocent man in a German prison camp. We have so much more reason to be hopeful than discouraged. The Democrats can take away your money, they can try to take away your guns, and they can try to take away your freedom but they can never take away your spirit, your joy, or your eternal salvation. Why give them the power they crave over you? As my priest would say, your joy is not their authority to take, so why volunteer it over? We don't go to the grave with our money or our guns anyway. What we do go there with is our faith and our happiness. I could have spent the year making clickbait videos about this or that thing that the Biden administration is doing or all the stupid things AOC has said, but I've gained something far greater than views, followers, or income this year, which I hope to now share with you. I ask that you guys stay with me as I navigate how to bring you the content you're here for, but with a new element added that glorifies Christ and leads more people to Him. I'll see you soon for part two, and I can't wait to share my journey to Catholicism with you all.